Yeah, hello, uh, and uh, welcome to this little repeat of the example that I did in class uh, the other day about merging two animals into one. Um, this was an intended to give you an introduction to Photoshop, uh, and especially using uh, the working with layers and working with selections and working with layer masks. Uh, but since um, it was a bit in the ending of the class, uh, I decided to repeat it here. So uh, if some of you need it, this is uh, here. It will happen. Um, and uh, it was about merging these two animals. Uh, so for starters, I will just, of course, open Photoshop. And I'll just click the Open uh, button to uh, import uh, the basic... Um, picture that I will build from in this example and this is the animal aviation bird JPEG which will be in the zip file on canvas for you as well and this is how it looks and you can see it's uh, inside uh, the workspace here and I over here have um, a background layer where my bird picture is located another thing you should notice is it's here it shows it's 67 percent approximately I want it to be a little smaller so I can see it better I press command minus to achieve that effect right that was the bird so now I want to import the giraffe picture so I will go to file and go to I'll select the place linked um, function here there are two ways to, to kind of place another picture inside a picture, but for this example, the place link will work. And I find the animal big clouds picture uh, with the giraffe in it. And here it is. And you can see when I import it, it will uh, appear with this bounding box, which enables me to grab the corners and uh, to take it, move it around, and even if I hover over the corner here, I can see, you can see, I can kind of uh, rotate the, the picture, so maybe that would be uh, fine, because I want it to, to fit on top of the bird here. You can see already now it's basically a little too little, so I'll scale it up a little bit. But now, I can, I can go back to this function, but now I think it's kind of okay. I have a little check mark button up here, I can press that one, or I can just press enter. So what happened now is that I have the picture of the giraffe and I have over here, I have two layers, um, one with the giraffe and one with the bird. I can press the little eye icon to take it away and reveal it again. What I want to do now is to make a selection of the giraffe's head. To do that, I'll click the selection or quick selection tool up here. And it works like, like a paintbrush. So you can see there's this little uh, thing here. I'll just try to click and you can see that when I do that, it's kind of step by step selects part of this picture. And by kind of tracing a little bit close to the, uh, the edge of the giraffe, it will kind of figure out what I want to select. I'll do something like this. You can see it's funny with a, with a little uh, dot here on the giraffe's neck, but uh, that's how it's done. So now we can see the selection by uh, having these little marching ants going around. So now I've selected the giraffe's head. Um, what I want to do now is to apply a layer mask. Uh, and uh, it might be a bit of an advanced concept already, but it's super central and that's why I introduce it now. You can see I have my selection active, I have my layer active, and then down here, I can press this uh, layer mask icon. What will happen is that it will add this uh, extra level to the, to the layer here. And you can see it's like a black and white picture. And you should imagine that it's put on top of the giraffe picture. And where it's white in here, we can see the picture. Where it's black, it will be transparent. Um, and that will help me because now I can start, you know, see, okay, the giraffe is here and the bird is there. So I will go and take this uh, move tool up here, click, and uh, move the giraffe's head approximately to where I want it, something like this. Um, of course, it looks a bit artificial because it has kind of these hard edges of the selection, especially down here on the neck. 
to fix that, I will work with my mask here because you can see I have the white for visible stuff and the black for invisible stuff. And basically, if I have shades of gray, it will be semi transparent. But the, the trick here is I will go and I'll pick the paintbrush tool. And I will uh, slowly, you can see I'll just have down here, you can see I have the black color selected. So if I paint black, you can see the effect, the effect will be that I, in this way, can paint away some of the giraffe's neck. Alternatively, I can go down here and I can switch to white. And in the same way, I can actually paint the giraffe's neck back again. And that's super smart because I will have access to all the parts of the picture if I want to. So nothing's been deleted here. Uh, and I can always then go back again and say, oh no, of course it shouldn't be here. So I can thoroughly paint it away again. And I'll do something like this. I can go up here, uh, press on this, it's the paintbrush tool and the properties of that is up here. And you can see I can make smaller or larger. I can make it a bit smaller one, maybe I'll do something like this. Of course I will not do that. Um, but then I can do a command or control set to undo it. Um, but I can also decide to have it really hard in the edges if I want like a super hard edge like this. Uh, or I can have it soft, which is hardness zero. And I have this, and I take it up in the big size again here. So I can do this softness. I think again, a quick way to switch between foreground and background color here is just pressing the, the X button. Bam, I go back to the white. And you can see here, I'll paint the back. And X, black again. So I can kind of tweak my the way I kind of mix these two pictures. Yeah, um, you can see uh, here, down here there are still some white areas. Uh, just to make sure, I think I'll just see if we can paint them away. Uh, here it is. There was some leftovers. Yeah, good. Something here like that. Okay, I'm fine now. Uh, one last thing is, because maybe I'm not super satisfied with the position so far, I can go to File sorry, uh, to edit, and take this free transform tool. You can see in my interface here, it's shortcut T, or so command T, it will be control T on the PC. I can just press that. You can see I have the bounding box uh, with me again, so I can scale it up or down, maybe like this. And I can, again, hover over the corner to rotate it a little bit, something like this. When I'm done, I can press the OK sign up here, or just press uh, Enter. And then I'm finally done with my little animal blend example. So what I need to do for the last thing um, is to go to File, and I want to save it. Uh, here I can go Save, and I prefer to save in two versions. First, I would like to save it just as a Photoshop file. Um, I can call it uh, any giraffe. That was a strange name, but that will be the name here. Uh, and you can see it will have the PSD extension because it's a Photoshop file. So I'll just quickly say that. So now I have that. The advantage of that is that if I want to go and edit it again, I still have my layers active and uh, I can use that. But for upload for uh, Facebook uh, and other maybe cameras online, I want to do a save as and I want to pick the JPEG format instead. So JPEG will kill the, the layers, but it will also decrease the file size and make, make it something that I can share online. I can, I can keep the name because now you can see it's uh, instead of PSD, it's JPEG, and let's just say save, and it's saved as a JPEG. When it does that, because it's a format that will be compressing the files, I can decide how hard it should be uh, compressed. I think this uh, 10 quality is fine. And you can see it's approximately 891 kilobytes, so that's fine. Bam. So I were able to create my little animal, and now I um, encourage you to try out the same. Okay, bye and take care.